Hello class. So in this video tutorial, we are going to be talking about the concepts of minimum wearable quantity and the aliquot method. Okay. Whenever you are compounding stuff in the lab or you are weighing out stuff on a prescription balance or electronic balance, it's a certain minimum quantity that is accurately wearable on that balance. If you go below that, your error margin increases precipitously. Okay, so it's important to understand what that minimum wearable quantity is and be able to compute it if it's not already given to you. The question is, how do you do that? Okay, now there's this relationship which tells you that the minimum wearable quantity is equal to the SR. SR is short, or, uh, an abbreviation for sensitivity requirement. Now, the sensitivity requirement on a prescription balance, for example, is how much you can add or remove from the balance before the marker on the balance will move one division. That is the sensitivity requirement. So, if you divide that by the maximum permissible error or the maximum acceptable error, then that gives you a minimum wearable quantity. So, let's look at an example. Say your sensitivity requirement was 6 milligrams. And your maximum percent error is 5%. How does it work? Your MWQ is going to be equal to your SR, your sensitivity requirement, which is 6 milligrams, divided by 5%. So 5% is 5 divided by 100. So we have actually 6 milligrams divided by 0 0.05. And that gives us a value of 120 milligrams. What it means is under these conditions, your balance has a minimum wearable quantity of 120 milligrams. Okay, so you, you really cannot weigh anything below that, below 120 milligrams without having a higher error than 5%. And actually, if you weigh something like a thousand milligrams, or which is also the same as one gram, your percent error would decrease tremendously. So the, as your quantity increases, your percent error decreases. Okay. Now, does it then mean that if you needed to weigh out something like 30 milligrams on that balance for your prescription, that's it's not possible to do that? Well, you could do that. There's a way to do that. And the way you would do that is actually to use the aliquot method. So I'm going to remind you of what we talked about in class, then look at an example of how you do it. Okay. How we use the aliquot method for solids and how we use it for liquids. Let's talk about the solids first. First, you will determine the minimum wearable quantity. Now, you already know how to do that. We just looked at it, okay? And then you weigh out a minimum amount, either equal to your minimum wearable quantity or greater than or a multiple of that, of the substance that you need to weigh. So let's say your minimum wearable quantity is 120. You can weigh out 120 of ibuprofen, 120 milligrams of ibuprofen. You then mix that amount that you just weighed of your active ingredient and add some inert substance like lactose, which is commonly used, to form a mixture or a, a, a dilution, a trituration. Okay, and from that mixture, you take out a small portion, which is known as the aliquot. Your aliquot is a small portion of the mixture or a sample of the mixture, and in that aliquot, it will contain the desired quantity of substance that you need. It's important that you understand that all quantities should be equal to or greater than the minimum wearable quantity before you can weigh them on that balance. Okay, that is the concept that we are using. Then to let you know exactly how much lactose you will need for your mixture, we use this proportion where you have the weight of drug in the aliquot in the numerator on your right hand side, which is what you actually need. So that could be like your 10 milligrams or 20 milligrams. And in the denominator, they have the weight of your aliquot, which normally I recommend you just let it be equal to the minimum wearable quantity of your balance. That way you don't end up wasting um, active ingredient or ingre um, reagents in general. On the left hand side, you have the weight of your drug in the trituration. Now that's the mixture you're going to make and from that mixture you take out an aliquot which will contain the weight of drug that you actually need. So the weight of drug in your trituration or the weight of drug in your mixture, I also normally rec recommend that it should be equal to the minimum wearable quantity. 
right that way you do not end up wasting these active pharmaceutical ingredients which could sometimes be very expensive okay now the denominator is the weight of trituration which is basically the weight of your mixture and that is the amount of drug that you just which i just talked about and lactose or your inner substance so how you know the amount of lactose to use is basically by using this equation or this formula and i'll show you an example it says how would you or how are the pharmacists weigh 30 milligrams of morphine sulfate with the sensitivity requirement of 6 milligrams and a maximum acceptable error of 5 percent first we need to determine the mwq which is 6 milligrams sr divided by 0 0.05 which is the percent error that gives us 120 milligrams so that is the minimum wearable quantity obviously the amount that we need which is 30 milligrams is less than that so we need to employ or use resort to the aliquot method so we set up our proportion as follows we have 30 milligrams which you need of morphine sulfate and we are going to determine our aliquot to be 120 milligrams and so we also weigh out 120 milligrams of morphine sulfate because that is the minimum that we can weigh on the balance and we don't want to waste this morphine sulfate so because the left hand side should be equal to the left right hand side we can use algebra to determine what the p is or our unknown when we do that we have 480 milligrams and how what that means then is you weigh out 120 milligrams of morphine sulfate on your balance and then to that you add 360 milligrams of lactose okay have a very good homogeneous mixture and out of this 480 milligrams of uh, of um, your mixture you then just weigh out 120 milligrams of that and in that aliquot you will have or in that 120 milligrams that you just weighed out you will have 30 milligrams of morphine sulfate and the rest will just be lactose okay so hopefully that is clear uh, let's look at another example of how you can be re uh, required to determine the error if you are given other information so here you have the maximum percent error is what you're supposed to calculate um, here you are told that 450 milligrams of powder is to be weighed on the balance which has a sensitivity requirement of 18 percent what is the maximum percent error so we basically simply substitute into this equation you have 450 equals to 18 divided by maximum percent error and that gives you four percent when you do the algebra okay but let's look at another example that helps us um, reinforce the concept of aliquots for solids okay so here it says you have a torsion prescription balance it has a sensitivity requirement of four milligrams and the question is how would you weigh five milligrams of hydromorphone hydrochloride and the error is not to exceed five percent it tells you to use lactose as a diluent so first we need to determine the mwq the minimum wearable quantity and the minimum wearable quantity in this case is going to be 5 divided by 0 0.05 and that gives us 100 milligrams so when we use our relationship our relation okay and we substitute in the values we can determine the weight of our total mixture okay that allows us to know how much lactose to add to the 100 milligrams of morphine sulfate which we can weigh out on our balance so we substitute in the numbers we need 5 milligrams in our prescription or in our preparation we want to take out 100 milligrams as our aliquot we can weigh accurately 100 milligrams of morphine sulfate we don't want to waste the drug so we stick to the MWQ here and then we solve for the total weight of the mixture using algebra and that gives us 2000 milligrams so what that means is or how this will work in the lab wherever you find yourself is you weigh out 100 milligrams of morphine sulfate and then you add 1900 milligrams of lactose you form a very nice homogeneous mixture and out of that mixture you weigh out 100 milligrams the 100 milligrams that you just took out from the mixture is your aliquot and that contains 5 milligrams of morphine sulfate isn't that just so nice okay 
So we looked at how you do it for solids. Let's see how you do it for liquids. And I'll take you to three steps which I talked about in class. We look at a couple of examples, and that should be good for you. I mean, you will definitely know this um, at the back of your hands, and it will be easy for you. Okay, so let's look at the steps that you need. First, you need to select the multiple of the desired quantity that you need. I will explain a little bit through the example. And then you dilute with a multiple. You do like dilute that quantity with some volume of your diluent in such a way that your total preparation will be divisible by the multiple that you selected in step one. Okay. Then in the third step, you will take out an aliquot from your, your dilution, and that aliquot will contain the quantity that you actually needed in the beginning, which you could not measure out accurately. Let us look at an example to clarify the steps or to illustrate these steps so that you, you get it for forever. Here it says using a 10 milliliter graduate calibrated in 1 milliliter units, explain how you would measure 1.25 milliliters of a dye solution by the aliquot method. It tells you or recommends you that you use water as a diluent. Now the key thing to pay attention to here is first of all, your graduate is calibrated in 1 milliliter units. What that means is you cannot weigh like a 0.25 or a 0.75 or a 0.3 or a 0.5, right? Because the divisions are in one milliliter units. Those that's the only way you can accurately weigh something out. You can't just eyeball like a quarter way between those two divisions and say that is like 1.25, right? That's not accurate. Also, your volume is a maximum of 10 milliliters, so you cannot make an a preparation or a dilution that is actually more than 10 milliliters milliliters because that would be more than the capacity of your your graduate that that doesn't make sense anyway so the question is let us see how the steps work in this example okay first we need to determine some multiple that will of 1.25 milliliters that can precisely be measured out in the graduate so if you look at it carefully, if you multiply 1.25 by 4, you have 5 milliliters. That is definitely measurable precisely on this graduate because of the 1 milliliter units. So we can do that. Now we need to add some water to this 5 milliliters of dye solution in such a way that the total volume of the dilution that we have can be divided by 4. So if, for example, we added 3 milliliters of water, we will not end up having a total of 8 milliliters of solution, okay? Now, this 8 milliliters can be easily divisible by 4. So if we take out a quarter of the dilution, which ends up being 2 milliliters of our dilution, it will contain 1.25 milliliters of dye solution. So that is how we get what we need okay for our preparation the two milliliters that we took out represents our aliquot and in that aliquot it contains the amount that we need the 1.25 milliliters of dye solution that we need for our preparation a final example to further strengthen the concept it says a formula calls for a hundred milliliters of pentobarbital sodium elixir okay and you, you need 0 0.75 milliliters of orange oil. It says using alcohol as a diluent and 10 milliliter graduates calibrated in 1 ml units. How would you obtain the desired quantity of orange oil? How would we get 0 0.75? We need to use the aliquot method here. So here again, if we actually multiply the 0 0.75 times 4, we will end up having 3 ml. Okay, so we'll take our graduate, pour the dye solution, see, hit the 3 ml mark, stop. Okay, now we need to add some volume of water in such a way that the total volume of our preparation would remain in the graduate, but also the total volume can be divided by 4 without any remainder. Okay, 
So if you add 5 ml of alcohol to the dye solution, we end up having 8 ml of dilution, which is divisible by 4 once again. So if we take a quarter, or if we measure out a quarter of the 8 that we just made, that will be 2 ml. And in that 2 ml, which is our aliquot, it will contain 0 0.75 milliliters of orange oil. Okay? So basically, that's the way you do this um, aliquot stuff. Okay? We talked about how you first need to know the minimum wearable quantity when it comes to solids, how you use that information to basically... Um, use uh, the relationship relation that we talked about to determine the aliquot that you need um, to take out for your to obtain your desired quantities and then we looked at how you use it for volume as well